And Brad did bonus uh, some details about skinny jeans as well. I don't wear my skinny jeans today, sorry. Um, so, good evening, everyone. Um, this is an interesting title, uh, I've got to admit. Uh, I purposely made that title to confuse everyone. Uh, but I searched for a long time which kind of approach I could give to this, to this talk. What I wanted to do initially was to give a talk about how much I love Perl, uh, how much amazing framework there is to Perl, but everyone in that room already know that. And I figured I would keep that kind of talk for a Node.js conference. <laughs> uh, instead, I will talk about Perl in a world of microservices. And this is the approach of me at Junior Skinny Jeans. Uh, this is actually a disclaimer. Uh, if you see anything that is wrong or just plain stupid, that would be why. Uh, so just don't throw bricks at me. Uh, or later. Um, so. When we talk about microservices, we almost always think about Docker. Uh, that may not be true, but at least I do. Uh, so we're going to be talking about Docker. Uh, Docker is new and shiny. Well, it's not that new anymore, but it is still shiny. Uh, it's a really, really interesting um, tool. For those who don't really know, what Docker gives you is uh, a way to write your set of instructions uh, Docker file, and that Docker file will create a Docker image, and you can then use that image to run containers, and you run your apps in your containers. Um, it's fairly easy to use. Uh, I started using Docker six months ago, and I started having a bit the hang of it. Uh, there's some bits a bit strange to it, but overall, it's nice to use. But we are here for Perl, so why am I talking about Docker? Well. Docker and Perl, or do they work together? Uh, you spoil a bit my talk, yeah, sorry. but <laughs> it's fine. Let's say it's a nice intro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the, the first thing about uh, a Perl app is managing your dependency. Um, so that can be annoying because there's the Docker cache. Um, in the set of construction you have in your Docker file, Docker will cache every command. That is very practical if, for example, you're an apt get update, and then you run all sort of checks and giggles after that. And it will not rerun again the apt get update unless it has a good reason to, so you don't lose time. But if, for example, you, um, you install your dependency, so we say cpanem install apps, and then you need to like, install a package, and the instruction for installing the package is after cpanem, and it needs to be updated, uh, sorry, before spanning, Docker will generate everything and will end up reinstalling the whole dependency chain. So that can be really, really annoying. And also there's a question of where and how to install your dependency because it's not really your local machine or a server, it's a container, so it's slightly bit different. So to do that, I like to have a subdirectory in my repo that I call docker devs or whatever, and inside the directory, I put a docker file uh, the first line you see is the, I specify which base image I'm going to use, so I'm not <coughs> mental enough to do my own from scratch images. I use the one provided by Docker. Uh, I don't use the latest tag and I use a fixed version of Perl to avoid nasty, nasty surprises. Um, I then just add one file, the cpan file, because that's <coughs> all I need for a base image with dependency, and then I install the depths, and that's my dependency image. There's nothing else in it. And the, <coughs> the command is very simple. I seed into the directory, and I build it, and I tag it with a proper name, uh, so my app slash depths, and the dot is the context. I could actually do, uh, stay in the root folder and do slash docker depths, and we'll use that as the context, but just to show that I use that. Uh, but what about the actual app? What, how do you, how do you do it? It is easy. Uh, you use your image that you newly built as the base image. You add whole of the repo. Uh, that could be optimized because obviously if they do that, <coughs> they also add the Docker file, which I don't really care about. <laughs> um, I changed the work directory. Uh, put in SRV in my app, but can pretty much never run anymore. I then run the test. I like to do that because if your test run correctly when you build your image, then that means your image is ready to be used. 
And then CMD, I just, whatever you use to start your Perl app. So in that case, it's just a small example with Morpho. Uh, but that can be anything. You're not forced to use that. You can then specify that at runtime when you run your container, but it's easier because the run command is then much quicker, much shorter. And the, the command looks like that. You build your image, and then you run it. Uh, run it, uh, the I provide a pseudo TTIY, and no, I pro keep the STDI in, and T provide a pseudo TTIY. And then you just tag it. And if you don't specify CMD, you add at the end uh, the command you use to run your app. And if I want to edit the file, if I want to work on my container, if I want to actually use that as the development, it's possible, uh, but you will soon realize that if you do that, you need to rebuild the image every time you make an update to that file, because they need to be recopied into the container. So what I do to, to not be annoyed like that is a bit nasty, but it do work. I use the Docker shell volumes, and you just run it with the command. You mm -hmm. have a git checkout of your directory and local mm -hmm. machine, and then you um, you link it to the um, to the directory you used, and then you run the app. And if you edit the file, they're going to be to be run uh, in your Docker container. The only thing a bit nasty about that is you are applying new image that you don't use, but uh, it's for that. It's fine. Uh, the thing you need to really consider when you do that is you need to have a Perl app that's supposed to deploy, or, um, or otherwise you'll have to kill the container and run it because you will not uh, realize that you made changes. And I actually talk way faster than I should have because I have three minutes left, but that's it. <laughs> so, um, sorry for any approximation. Uh, don't throw bricks at me. And I am Jules Nicole, and I'm of course on GitHub, and I've made lots of horrible code that you can see if you want. So, any question? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I said you're using Bajalicious. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that's, that's the skinny jeans. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the skinniest jeans I could find in the form. <laughs> there are some fat jeans that use it too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know. Um, I'm not saying it's it's surprising. I'm just saying. Um, it's not unusual at all. <laughs> no, no, that's not what I'm saying. I was saying that more um, Docker is more a tool made by by more skinny jeans people. I shouldn't say using that, but what I say is like Docker is more hype. Docker is hype. Well. Is less high. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a wonderful thing to do. <laughs> you know what I'm going to say next time. Yeah. yeah. Like he says, don't throw bricks at him. But the talking bit would be good. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.